hello hello guys welcome back to another video this is the football connect i'm your host sam and we are here doing my premier league predictions of game week one a video coming some hours a little bit later than it should be happening so forgive me on that one but we have a lot of things to cover i did predict that the manchester city game would back on wednesday if you remember and i said 2-1 but they won by three goals to nil Burnley and event and company did not really convince me the way I expected them to do But anyway, it doesn't mean that football is ending there. We have so much things to talk about We have some games that are starting some games are even starting in 30 minutes from now So it's gonna be exciting to see how this one plays out, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section I can't wait to see how the new season is starting up and is heating up We have a massacre of a transfer saga that has been happening elsewhere and I have a feeling that saga will contribute so much to the biggest game of the week we have which of course that i need to start with we are going to start talking about liverpool versus chelsea remember they are busy going back and forth over the moises caicedo deal also the romeo lavia deal as well as in it looks like it's a tug of war at the moment the other team has the money to do whatever they want to do to get the player that they want. The other team is hoping that they can let some players out so that it can help them get the player that they want. They have already let a, a, a transfer that they were about to actually have a done deal on go back home after he had finished the medical in Tyler Adams. But now things continues because they're trying to add some money so that they can have that signing that they've been working on, which... In this case, it will be Moises Caicedo. That's the deal that they want. So, well, how did this start? It was the hijack of all hijacks that Liverpool pulled out and they set some money that they knew Chelsea could never reach in terms of the transfer bid that they made. And now Chelsea are trying by all means to make things work, but they cannot actually manage to do so because, you know, they're Chelsea. They have been signing players like it was bloody Christmas. Now when they need less players so that they have enough in finance to get the player that they want, they can't. And they are pushing so many Liverpool buttons so that Liverpool can let go of the Moises guy. Say the deal, then things can go back to normal. But Liverpool are not going to do that. They are not giving up that easily. And at the moment, it seems like Chelsea have paid so many journalists to have them on their side. So it's really, really crazy how this deal is going. And it's really, really crazy how the tag of war into the the exchange of words and everything that is happening is going it's exciting times people and i have no idea how the situation will come to an end so that was just a pre-story before i tell you my thoughts on the game between chelsea versus liverpool at Stanford bridge is gonna be played on a super sunday the first biggest game of the season which has been played at Stanford bridge the reason why it's been played there because liverpool could not actually start the the game at Enfield because you know the Enfield is still being rebuilt and they're not yet done. But now this is forcing Liverpool to move on to another to play a game with a team that can actually be able to take them on the first game, which is Chelsea. Now Mauricio Pochettino's new Chelsea, it is one of the teams that people have been talking about. It's full of surprises, people. They are winning games that so many people were not even expecting. They are performing at a level that the world did not even expect to see them do. But that's all building up to the game. Because now as we stand and now as we are hearing, they find themselves in... I don't know how can I even put this into words. They find themselves in a game that is going to demand so much. Because it could be the game that, you know, forces... And maybe attract the player that they're all both trying to sign to actually go to the other team because remember one thing that Chelsea did in this transfer summer was to let so many players go so Liverpool if we really think about it they are actually gonna be facing Chris James Kepa if I'm not mistaken and Chilwell as some of the players that they've faced before in the Chelsea squad but and Mikhail Mondri but the rest of them they're going to be a new squad. So, it's going to be played at Stamford Bridge. And the Liverpool, of course, they have the upper hand. In fact, they are being, they are being predicted by a 39% winning this game, 26% a draw, then a 35% Chelsea winning this game. This game has always given so much into what happens here, but most of the times it has ended in a draw. 
but because of the craziness that is happening when it comes to the transfer window now this game looks like it's gonna be the scariest game that we might actually have to witness on planet on planet football or even on planet tv because these people might actually want to murder themselves or murder each other in the ground so that they can lure out of the signings into their club so it's gonna be exciting it's more of the Pochettino versus club who doesn't really have a good record in terms of winning against Klopp? Because Klopp always got his number. I have no idea how, but he always does. But it looks like it's going to be exciting how they're going to set it up and whatever that's going to be happening. Liverpool are going to be going there without no DM. They wanted to sign Moises Caicedo. They want, they, that's why they made sure that the Thursday deadline was reached to Brighton. But now we're here. It hasn't yet been reached and Brighton want this thing sorted up before anything so today could be the day things happen we never know but if Liverpool are going into this game without a DM we might find ourselves seeing McAllister playing as a DM and maybe just maybe if Thiago Alcantara's feet could be also part of the game while Sobos lies on the other side that is not really a strong mid midfield it is strong in terms of going forward but in defending it's questionable so we're gonna have to see how club is planning it up he can also put curtis jones there because it seems like he has made him play so well so you know it's a makeshift midfield for liverpool at the moment even though it is a makeshift strong midfield chelsea gonna try to do something i don't know it's a young blood squad people it can surprise anyone they have a guy called jackson who's taking the world by storm but he's gonna be meeting the likes of Konat and van dyke so that is also something that you need to be watching out over also the gunmen of liverpool are gonna be firing either jota gakpo salah whoever set up nunes uh anyone even Luis diaz they are gonna be firing they want to leave a mark on chelsea so this is gonna be something that you need to watch i'm predicting that liverpool win this game by two goes to one and i feel like Chelsea are going to fight to the end, but I think they're going to be outclassed by the strength of the goal-scoring techniques that Liverpool has up forward. So it might even be 4-1 or 4-2. You never know, but that's what I'm saying. Go, go watch the game. It's going to be exciting. But can that actually force it helps it help Liverpool get Moises Caicedo? I don't really think so because I feel like the agent is more involved into this thing than actually what we're expecting. So... I'm just leaving it out there. Um, the other game that we're going to have to keep an eye on is Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest, which is actually coming in the next 30 minutes. And I think Arsenal are going to win this game by five goals to two or something like that because I feel like Arsenal's fire is strength in the midfield, the depth that they have, and going forward, they are going to surprise so many people. In fact, while I'm talking to you, I think the lineup is already out, if I'm not mistaken. And the Arsenal squad is going to be Ramsdale at goal. Thomas Pate is playing as a right back. Bain White along Saliba is at the center. Timber there at the left. Odegaard, Rice and Harvard are in the midfield. Inketia, Martinal and Saka. That's how they've set it up. That's new to me. I did not expect that, but it's going to be exciting to see how that actually plays out. So it's going to be exciting. Let's see. I've never seen Pate. Pate, why is he playing at left back? It's surprising time. In fact, it's right back. Surprising times for us now. The other game we need to watch is Sheffield United versus Crystal Palace. Now, this is the, of course, the watch along where we have so many games being played, the goal rush. And I think Crystal Palace are going to beat Sheffield United by three goals to one. And I'm seeing Bournemouth and Hammers, Bournemouth beating West Ham by two goals to nil. The reason why I'm saying that is West Ham, I don't think they're yet strong because even the signings that they've done, I don't think they're at the club yet. Um, Luton versus Brentford. I think Brentford, uh, I think Brighton, or oh, Brighton versus Luton. I think Brighton are going to win this game by four goals to nil, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be exciting. This is one of the teams that I've been added into the new roster of the premier league by the way if you understand what i mean but it's gonna be exciting everton versus fulham fulham could be without mitrovic william i don't know there's still some shakiness in that team but the west time i told you that there's a reason why i predicted them to be one of the teams relegated because they haven't proven anything they haven't shown us if they have anything to prove that's why i'm still gonna be going with fulham win i think it's gonna be a 3-1 win to fulham at everton then newcastle versus aston villa now this is one of the best clash we are having we're gonna be watching today it's gonna be played at 6 30. i'm gonna talk about this game just giving you my thoughts after the game but i'm telling you this 
is going to be one of the games we are going to have to keep an eye on because there's going to be so much celeb so much expectations from both teams for west when newcastle being one of the strongest team they're in the champions league but aston villa being one of the strongest teams ready to challenge you never know it might end 2-2 or maybe could be a 3-2 win to newcastle those are my predictions i have no idea why i have a feeling that if there's gonna be any, a team that wins here it has to be newcastle then we look at on sunday super sunday i've already done one of the games we have Brentford versus Tottenham without Harry Kane. That has to be put in. But also, Brentford are without their main striker as well. So, Tony. So, there is a lot of things that are going to be happening in this game. But it's going to be exciting. I'm going to be saying that this ends as a 1-1 one, one draw because I'm wondering where are the goals coming from from Tottenham. Brentford can put out the goals, but where are they coming from from Tottenham? That's where my question is. If that doesn't happen, don't be surprised by actually seeing Brentford beating Tottenham Hotspurs. You never know. Arsenal were beaten by two goals to one. It could happen again. Anyway, Chelsea versus Liverpool, I talked about it. The last game which we're going to talk of match week one is Manchester United versus Wolves, which is going to be played on Monday. It's going to be behind the lights. It's going to be exciting. We, it's going to be after we have already thought of, we've done that show where we talk about how the games were like. This is just going to be the last game that we see. I feel like United are strong and they're going to beat Wolves by either three goals to one or two goes to one the reason why i cannot put so many goals into united side is because where who is scoring those goals if i don't think marcus rush for what he did last season is going to do it this season so that's where all my questions are ah. so those are the eating people my predictions of all the games that have been played in match week one of the premier league let me know your thoughts in the comment section do you agree with my assessment do you agree with what i'm saying do you think it's possible let me know yours as well. Put your prediction down below in the comment section. I did predict City and City beat the team by three goals to nil. You never know. We are out. Click the like button. Subscribe to the Connect. Peace.